Hi guys, my name's Annie. Welcome back to Scottish Dean Productions, and today we're doing a review of the new LSWR B4 from Dapol. One of the few of the 25 B4 tank engines built by William Adams for the London Southwestern region between 1891 and 1908. The class were assigned to various depots around the London Southwestern Railway system, including Southampton Docks, Eastleigh, Plymouth, Frary, and Bournemouth. The Southern Railway also used them at Dover Marine, Ashford, Stewart's Lane, and Guildford. They were also used to shunt cramped goods yards at Winchester City Railway Station. With a mighty tractive effort of £14,650, these B4 class locomotives could easily haul a heavy train. Two of these iconic steam locomotives have been preserved. Number 96 Normandy was sold to the Coral Limited and used as their Southampton Coal Depot, where it was named Coral Queen. It has been preserved on the Bluebell Railway, where in the days before it had any diesels. It was often used where the other heritage railways used diesel shunter. As of now, Normandy is at the end of its boiler certificate and on static display at a waiting overhaul. Number 102 Granville was purchased in 1964 after withdrawal by Butlins and then put on display alongside LMS Royal Scott number 6100 in the firm Skegness Holiday Camp. In 1971 it was moved to Bresingham Steam Museum near Dis, Norfolk where it remains on display, no news of overhauls. <laughs> So I have just got back from Ribblesteam Railway and this was in a parcel on uh, the sofa and I know I've ordered it so I immediately knew this was in the box. So why have I got this? I'll show you when you see the model because you know what my collection is like? It's 95% preserved models. So I'll let you guess right now. Uh, what model it is. So, looking at the box, wow, it's huge. This is actually bigger than the Andrew Barkley box, and I think this and the Andrew Barkley aren't too similar uh, in size wise. They're completely different class of locomotive, but size wise, I think they're a little bit similar. So, the box presentation wise, it looks amazing. We've got a little um, blueprint on the side of the loco and from the front. Honestly, that is just perfect. If they'd done it from all angles, I, it might have been a bit too much for me. But other than that, it's absolutely fantastic. So, let's have a look at the contents of the box. So, here we are at the Silson Steam Shed. And here's the box. Straight away. We've got this little lovely owner's manual leaflet. I've got the contents, owner's guide, telling you how to take it apart, service it, care when removing, all that stuff. Uh, local lubrication, got the spare parts list, and it actually tells you what everything is. So if you ever need any spare parts, it's all in there. And then we've got um, all the different descriptions of what item is on here. We've got the part numbers, so again, if they're lost, they can be uh, repurchased. There's a manufacturer warranty inside. 
and that appears to be it. So I'll probably just draw in these three pages, but I don't know if that will invalidate the warranty. Nice piece of styrofoam cover, same thing that Hatton's do with their Andrew Barclays, and there she is. Can't really see it, but it's in a nice ice cube packaging. Do you know what it is yet? Hmm. Alright, and here we've got um, some odd couplings. I don't think I've ever seen those kind before, but they are, do have NEM sockets. Let's get this out. Hmm. And here we go, nice, oops, nice protective sheet. And then here it is. So if you didn't guess it by now, I've gotten Normandy from the Bluebell Railway, I think it is. As soon as I spotted this on eBay, I just had to get it. It looks absolutely amazing. Got separately, oh, it's not even on camera, whoops. Uh, separately fitted pipes, coupling rods, handrails, safety valves over here. All the detail in the cab is absolutely amazing. This is actually going to come close to rivaling the Andrew Barkley. Separately fitted lamp irons. Sprung buffers as well. This is really good. Neatly applied. Uh, brass work. Very well painted. Glazing on the back and in the front of the windows. Separately fitted uh, smoke box doors. This is just absolutely amazing. Under frame, very nicely done. It's just absolutely amazing. Even the sandboxes have been incredibly well done. I mean, that lid just looks like I can pop it off and put sand in it. Really impressed. So let's put it on Silson Steam Railway and see how she looks. So here we are once again on Silson Steam Railway and Normandy looks right at home. This will be on this layout because any 040 will be on this layout, regardless. And I actually really am impressed with how small it is and how well it just fits in with everything. Now Normandy is currently out of service I believe with an expired boiler ticket. so. I'm not going to do what I normally do at exhibitions and not run it. I'm going to run this by all means. But because Silson Steam Railway is out of commission, I'm going to clap up my hands and we will be at Sil uh, Stirling. No, wait, what? I'm going to clap my hands and we're going to be at Ribble Valley Railway. One, two, three. And just like that, we're here at Ribble Valley Railway. So, where do we go from here? Well, we're going to look at the haulage capacity, running ability, and any other hidden features I can find. So first off, running. How smooth is it off the line? Wow, that is very smooth. And back she comes. That is really smooth, and I actually can't hear a thing. That is seriously impressive. So, running ability, very, very nice. Now, haulage capability. This layout is constantly, uh, well not constantly on a gradient, but it has gradients that are very uh, challenging for some locos. Uh, the Andrew Barkley, with the permanent way train it's got, can just about manage uh, the train that it's got. So. I'm wondering if the Andrew Barkley can handle it, can Normandy? So let's find out. So here is the permanent way train, thanks to our lovely little Andrew Barkley there. Now that Andrew Barkley has quite a small gradient for the hill that uh, it's on. Now the one that Normandy's on is quite bigger. So if I have to, and Normandy can't get up this gradient, I'll have to see how it handles it on the track 3 gradient, which is about half of what this one is. So, let's push it back into the station, and then see how it does with the run-up. So 
So guys, I now have Normandy in the station with the permanent way train. All uh, possible wagons have got loads in them to add an extra bit of weight. So if Normandy does get this up the hill, this will be impressive. But if it doesn't, it's still a fantastic loco. So let's see how strong you are. Can it do it? Oh, it's slipping. Ah, damn. That's a real shame. Now, I'm going to take Normandy off and see if the Barclay can do this. So, Normandy, back to your station. Okay, so the Barclay is in the station with the permanent way train. I've marked on the other track where Normandy uh, stopped. So, let's see how the Barclay handles it. I've put it at the same speed Normandy was at. And it's actually done it. So there we have it guys, the Barclay is actually stronger than Normandy. So, tractive effort isn't that good with a heavy load on a gradient, but on a flat, it performs brilliantly because I've just tested it and if it got to the top of the hill it would have pulled the load no problem which is actually really good now let's have a look at how it gets over points okay so I've got Normandy at a reasonably slow pace now these points are known to catch 040 locos out and here comes Normandy and no hesitation at all that is impressive now in that last clip I doubt you saw it but I noticed something in the cab when Normandy went past I have a suspicion of what it is and if it is what I think it is it's gonna bump the marks up a lot from what they are right now in my head so we're gonna go over to the viaduct we're going to hold Normandy in place and look inside the cab and see if I can spot what happened. So guys, here we are on the very makeshift uh, testing thing, whatever I've done. <laughs> and I was right, you guys need to see this. In there, <clears throat> in the cab, there is a factory fitted firebox flicker. That is amazing. I've never seen that on a ready to run double O gauge model. This B4 from Dapol has been done to perfection, almost except for the lightweight and the low tractive effort. But other than that, I am really impressed. So, what are my final thoughts on this model? Well, the running uh, capabilities are amazing, it's really smooth really really quiet I mean I could barely hear anything when it was just trundling around the layout um, just before I filmed it going over the points it was really really quiet the tractive effort could be better uh, I think it's mainly because the loco is so light uh, and the Barclay could pull the permanent wage train because it's quite a bit heavier uh, than Normandy here so that could be the only issue if it was a little bit heavier maybe it could have pulled a permanent way train all the way around with no effort whatsoever but who knows I've still got um, several things to try but other than that I'm really really impressed with everything the factory fitted detail like the lamp pines, the brake pipes, the coupling hooks uh, just all the detail, I mean, the detail in the cab is, I'm sorry, Hattons, but Dapol is beating you for cab detail on this model. It is insanely well done. So really well done to Dapol for this model. I really hope they bring out another one better than this. I hope they top this with another double O gauge model. But final marks for this model has got to be a solid 9 out of 10. Why the one? Mainly because of the tractive effort. But other than that, it is fantastic, guys. I really recommend you go out and you get one of Dapple's B4s. They are really worth it. I picked this up for £100 off eBay. 
So this was definitely worth the money and I definitely recommend you go out, see which ones uh, you would probably like yourself and get one because they are so worth it guys. So that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like and a good comment. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike and a back comment. And as always guys, I will see you in the next video and see you later. Bye guys.